What happens to you, you're sitting in your office, when you realize the thing you did for the last few days, maybe weeks, yeah. is a failure? Well, for me, I switched to a different problem. <laughs> uh, so, uh, as I said, I'm, 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 I'm a fox, I'm not a hedgehog. But you legitimately, that is a break that you can take, is, is to step away and look at a yeah. different problem. Yeah. You can modify the problem too. Um, I mean, um, yeah, you can add some cheat. Like if, if there's a specific thing that's blocking you, that, that this, um, some bad case keeps showing up that, that, that for which your tool doesn't work, you can just assume by fiat this, this bad case doesn't occur. So you, you do some magical thinking, um, for the, you know, but, but, but strategically, okay, for the point to, to see if the rest of the argument goes through. Um, if there's multiple problems uh, with, with, with your approach, then maybe you just give up. Okay? Mm -hmm. But if this is the only problem that, you know, and everything else checks out, you know, then it's still worth fighting. Um, so yeah, yeah, you have to do some, some sort of forward reconnaissance sometimes. <laughs> to, uh, you know. And that is sometimes productive? To assume yeah. like, okay, we'll figure it out oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. eventually. Um, sometimes actually it's, it's even productive to make mistakes. So um, one of the, I mean, um, there was a project which actually, uh, we won some prizes for actually, but um, with four other people, um, we worked on this PDE problem again. Actually, this blow off regularity type problem, um, and it, it was considered very hard. Um, Jean Bourguin, um, uh, who was a, another field specialist, who worked on, this, on a special case of this, but he could not solve the general case. Um, and we worked on this problem for two months, and we found we thought we solved it. We, we had this this cute argument that if everything fit, and we were excited. Uh, we were planning celebrationary um, to all get together and have champagne or something. Um, and we started writing it up. Um, and one of, one of us, not me actually, but another co-author said, oh, um, in this in this lemma here, we um, we have to estimate these 13 terms that, sh that show up in this expansion. And we estimated 12 of them, but in our notes, I can't find the, the estimation of the 13th. Can you, can someone supply that? And I said, sure, I'll look at this. And, and I keep, oh, yeah, we didn't cover that. We completely omitted this term. And this term turned out to be worse than the other 12 terms put together. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, we could not estimate this term. Um, and we tried for a few more months uh, and all different permutations. And there was always this one thing, one term that we could not control. Um, and so like, um, this was very frustrating. Um, but because we had already invested months and months of effort in this already, um, we stuck at this. We, we tried increasingly desperate things and, and crazy things. Um, and after two years, we found an approach which was somewhat different, but quite a bit from our initial um, strategy, which did actually didn't generate these problematic terms and, and, and actually solved the problem. So we, we solved the problem after two years. But if we hadn't had that initial false dawn of nearly solving the problem, we would have given up by month two or something and, and worked on an easier problem. Um, yeah, if we had known it would take two years, not sure we would have started the project. Yeah, sometimes actually having the incorrect, you know, it's, it's like Columbus traveling in the new, new world, they had an in incorrect version of the uh, measurement of the earth, size of the earth. Um, he thought he was going to find a new, new trade route to India. Uh, or at least that was how he s sold it in his prospectus. I mean, it, it could be that he actually secretly knew, but. Just on the psychological element, do you have like, emotional or like self-doubt that just overwhelms you moments like that you know because th this stuff it feels like math it's is so engrossing that like it can break you when you like invest so much yourself in the problem and then it turns out wrong you could start to a similar way chess has broken some people yeah um i i think different Mathematicians have different levels of emotional investment in what they do. I mean, I think for some people it's just a job. You know, you you have a problem, and if it doesn't work out, you you, work, you go on the next one. Um, yeah. So the fact that you can always move on to another problem um, it reduces the emotional connection. I mean, there are cases. You know, so there are certain problems that are what are called mathematical diseases, where 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 just latch on to that one problem and they spend years and years thinking about nothing but that one problem and, and um you know maybe the, the career suffers and so forth they say oh but i got this big win this will you know once i once i finish this problem i will, I will, I will make up for all the years of of of, of lost opportunity and that, that, that's that's i mean occasionally occasionally it works but I, I um i really don't recommend it for people who have the, the right fortitude yeah so i i've never been super invested in any one problem um one thing that helps is that we don't need to call our problems in advance. Uh, we, um, well, uh, when we do grant proposals, uh, we sort of say we will, we will study this set of problems. But even though we don't promise, definitely by five years, I will supply a proof of all these things. You, know, we, um, you promise to make some progress or discover some interesting phenomena. 
uh, and maybe you don't solve the problem, but you find some related problem that you, you, know, you, you can say something new about. Uh, and that's, that's a much more feasible task.